besides functional transformation, which is actually one of the smoothest ways to graph this, we're going to graph it by actually plotting a handful of points. So we have the graph of x minus 2 plus 1, x, x minus 2 squared plus 1. So I'm going to make a t-table over here with x and y values. And when the parabola is written in this very pretty form, notice that if we were to replace x with 2, we would get 0 in here. So I'm going to take the opposite of the number that's inside of the argument with the x and write that in the middle. And then I'm just going to simply choose two numbers right in front of it and two numbers right afterwards. So I'm going to deal with the number 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. What do I get when I stick in the number 2? Well, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 squared is 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1. So I get the value of 2 comma 1. Now let's plug in the number 3. 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Now let's plug in the number 4. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So we get the number 5. Now let's go back, take the number 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 minus 2 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So all tallied, the points we're going to need are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, and 4, 5. So the shape of the parabola would come in like that and go like that. Now a couple things to note, because I'm going to do a couple more examples, two more examples, but we're going to use some shortcuts. So this would be the long cut way. Uh, a couple shortcuts are to notice that if you look at this number here, minus 2, if you remember from functional transformation, that represents a shift 2 to the right, and plus 1 means a shift upward. So that's why the beginning point of this parabola, instead of being at 0, 0, is now at 2, comma 1. And since we don't have anything fancy going on in front here, no stretches or uh, compressions of any sort, it actually turns out that these are always going to go up by 1 and by 3, and by 1 and by 3. And it also turns out that we're going to have this extraordinary amount of symmetry over the axis of symmetry. So let's take all of that information and go over and graph this one smoother, a little bit more, uh, or I should say more efficiently, uh, not smoother necessarily, but more efficiently. So, x, y, what's the opposite of the number right here? That would be negative 3, and then count upward 2 and downward 2. Okay. Next, what is the number that you see here? That's the negative 2, and then we're going to add 1, and then add 3, add, and then put the same numbers on the other side, add 1 and add 3. So funny enough, this is going to end up being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma, 2, so negative 5, comma, 2, negative 4, comma, negative 1, negative 3, comma, negative 2, negative 2, comma, negative 1, and negative 1, comma, 2. So notice that that's a lot smoother, and we end up getting almost the same shape but it's just been shifted left 3 and down 2 instead of the other graph, or uh, un, you know, just graph or uh, shifted in a different direction. So pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. Assuming you gave it a shot here, hopefully you got 2 as your middle point, going down 2, up 2, negative 4 as your y coordinate of that vertex, and then you went up 1 up 3 and put the same numbers on the opposite side and then graphed all of those points 0 0 1 with a negative 3 2 with a negative 4 3 with a negative 3 and 4 with a 0 
and again it should look like almost the exact same type of a parabolic shape.